What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Solo Leveling Arise video. Alright guys, if you haven't checked it out, I think this is probably the craziest live stream I've ever done in my life. We had cosplaying, we had uh, taken over someone's crazy whale account, we had a thousand plus summons, and a crazy, crazy fun time. So go check out the live stream from today. You guys won't regret it, I promise you. Uh, there is a chat going on roughly about an hour in. I start probably an hour and a half if you want to see all the crazy stuff that happened. Anything before that is just my gameplay and me chatting with you guys. Also, uh, big ups to Nato for uh, allowing me to be part of her community and her part of mine now. So we're going to be doing a lot more collabs. So definitely go check out her channel as well to subscribe to her Twitch and her YouTube and definitely join her Discord for crazy giveaways that we'll both be doing going forward, both on my Discord and her Discord. So uh, very, very excited for that collaboration. And I think uh, the community will benefit most from this because we're both very giving people and we want to see the this community flourish. So with that being said, let's talk about the video. What are we here for? So I want to talk a little bit about the best weapons and characters for each single element. I think this is important because when you're doing Battlefield of Time or if you're doing any type of like um, event that requires you to use a specific element, it's important to note which ones are going to be the ones that matter most and which ones will get you the furthest. And some of these may surprise you, right? So before I do that though, real quick, Battlefield of Time. If you have not done so guys, this is how you claim your reward. You manually have to go back to each boss and claim it. If you have not done so, go back and do it now, okay? Because if you are missing out on this, you're missing out on currency. So go back please, get yourself those currency, and jump in and get yourself those limited rewards because Battlefield of Time is something that's very, very precious and you get some of the best rewards from there. So let's talk a little bit about the best weapons. We're gonna start off with each element and go through weapons, including hunters. We're gonna talk all about that. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the Jinu side of weapons because that's where most of it matters. The SSR weapons for hunters, you obviously wanna get those. Those are gonna fit for them. They're not elemental anyways. So nothing to do with that. We're just gonna talk about the weapons. So let's start off with dark weapons. Okay, so dark is the easiest one. You've got three really main popular weapons here. We've got the Scythe, the Plum, and the Moonshadow Daggers, all right? Those three are the most popular three weapons for dark. All combinations of those will work well together. Here's how you kind of figure out what you want to do. If you are trying to have more timing, because your timing is off, so you need to slow down time to do more DPS, and you want more damage for dark weapons, you end up using the Moonshadow with either of those two weapons. If you need more crit damage, use the Plum Sword. If you need overall damage in general, use the Scythe, all right? So all three of those are the best weapons and all two, any combination of those two are more than viable. So please, 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 don't worry about what you're using. They're, they're amazing together, okay? So let's, that, that one's out of the way. Let's talk now about the light weapons. So light weapons, very easy one here. The Huntsman and the Radira Bow. You definitely don't want to be without this bow. This bow is absolutely bonkers and incredible. So please, for the love of God, guys, I'm going to move over here. If you have this bow, level it up, okay? On my free-to-play account, I have an A4, and it's pushed my account even further, okay? So those two are your primary light weapons. You don't want to be without that. There is an honorary one here as well, too, and that's going to be the Demon Knight Spear, which you can kill with if you are very, very talented and good at using it. Super fast, super efficient, and honestly sh shoots like 12... 12, 12 of these things at a time if you can ignore the cooldown, which I think there's a trick to do. So shout out to Cartel who talked to me about it. I haven't had a chance to look at this video, but apparently you can. So this weapon is an honorary mention. I don't personally use it as often as I should probably, but I know people who do and they love it. So those three weapons are incredibly powerful together. So feel free to use those at any time. The Lustrous Sword is good early on. I don't use it after Igris. That's all I really needed it for and everything else is pretty mediocre, okay? All right, water. Let's be real, water has so many damn options, guys. The two best, of course, are going to now be Scatty and the Grimoire. Scatty and the Grimoire, if you haven't checked out the live stream, you can check out the, how, how they work together. I actually was able to use an, uh, an account and like a crazy whale account with Megalodon account and use these two. Absolutely destroys everything, everything. So the Scatty and the, um, the Grimoire, Two of the best water weapons easily. Now, if you were going, if you don't have either of those water weapons, your next two to go for is going to be the Kasaka Blades, which are absolutely great for free-to-play players, and also the Frostbite Falcon. Both are really, really good. I find those two to be a little bit better than the Naga Trident. Personally, I don't use the Naga Trident as much anymore. These two are definitely more dominant than that. So 
honor really mentions honorable mentions for these two four free to play players especially if you have them at a5 and up right so keep that in mind early access players will have a little bit more access to that than, than anybody else will okay all right going over to wind weapons west wind easily easy best weapon in the game uh and then of course we have ourselves the demon longsword which is also very good especially at a3 becomes even more powerful this one a lot more powerful at a3 west wind pretty much works from a0 and up I use that. At, I use, I've been using it at A zero from my free to play account, and been dominating everything with it. So very, very powerful. So those two are, are really good. Honorable mention will be Baruka's dagger, but quite honestly, only at A five, so not that good. Before that, it, it's it's decent at best. Okay. All right, fire. Yeah, with the new buffs, Vulcan's rage, and of course the orb of avarice. These two weapons are together are extremely powerful. So if you're looking for any any elemental weakness for fire, those are the two weapons you want to focus on. Now, if you don't have Vulcan's Rage or you were silly enough to, to melt it or salvage it, then the other one here as an option is going to be the Grimoire. So the Grimoire and Orb of Avarice are very, very strong together as well. A lot more MP requirement to run both, but still very, very good. So you essentially want to do Orb of Avarice. When you pull everything together with the vacuum, you do the Grimoire and blow everything up. Very strong together, okay? So don't, don't sleep on those two. All right, that takes care of fire. Now, what do we have left here, guys? We did light, water, dark, wind, fire. I think we got everything for weapons. There you guys go. Best weapons to use in any scenario, especially in scenarios where uh, where it's like a time-sensitive situation, okay? So definitely use those. Now, let's talk a little bit about the characters. The characters are huge, okay? This is going to be a big part, obviously, because you'll be using hunters. You'll be using them either alone or with Junua support, okay? So, best light elemental hunters, this is a, a, a no-brainer. It's going to be Cha and Min, okay? Min boosts all of your attacks. Min boosts, if he's a hunter on the team, he'll also do punishment if he's not a hunter on the team, if he's support. Cha obviously does branded and also is the best DPS in the game. Easily the best two. There's nobody that comes even close to this combination, in my opinion. An honorable mention, of course, if you need a best, the best breaker in the game, besides Nam, of course, is Beck. Right, so Beck is really, really powerful as a breaker. Uh, not as high on the DPS portion, but will still do really well for you as a, as a breaker if that's what you need. So honorable mention goes to him. But those two right here are all you need. Water, the new dream team. We got Sa, we got Alicia. All right, the best breakers, one of the best breakers in the game, one of the best DPS in the games, and the other best DPS in the game. Now both well, now with the freeze option, an insane amount of core damage, and, a sh and both can shield. So these two are like the dream team for water there. And now if they're adding Mei Lin, who's also water, we're getting insane amounts of utility, guys, for water. Water might be the most powerful after this point, right? So these two here, honorable mention, of course, goes to Nam, best breaker in the game, in my opinion. Still, to this point, I don't care what anybody says. Prove me wrong. Still the best breaker in the game. So, the three of these are insane for any water damage okay so definitely definitely worth it all right let's go to fire team emma and choi no one better for fire emma goes first always because she's just she clears everything on her own uh and is has a is a shielder is a dps is a breaker she does it all where choi comes into play a lot more is when it comes down to full-on dps on bosses he just destroys everything with bosses. Plus the fact that he has a burn that helps her escalate her damage is amazing. So the two of these two can't compete with fire. And there's nobody else here at all for fire anyways besides uh, this scrub. <laughs> Sorry, one arm man. I feel bad saying that. But honestly, you cannot get better than those two. So if you have these two, these are the two fire teams. Only, they don't really give you a choice anyways, right? At the end of the day. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go over to Dark. Dark is a little bit more difficult. There's a lot more to Dark here that meets the eye, okay? So first off, Lee Bora takes, takes the cake right away. She is the essential Dark unit. Number one, she buffs Dark units. And number two, she gives uh, she does a debuff on the opponent to give you 15% uh, more damage. On top of that, she removes all debuffs on the floor. And at the, at the same time, she actually does great DPS now because her foxes are fixed. So amazing, amazing. She's a must-have. Now, where it becomes a little bit iffy is what you need. Lim is great DPS, good breaker. Okay, if you don't have a Dark Breaker, Lim is the one to go with. Uh, uh, Silvermane Beck, the best DPS for Dark, easily. Third best DPS in the game right now. So you are not, you can't sleep on him, right? And his bleed is, is, is almost essential to some higher-end content. And if you don't have him, you have the, the ghetto version of him right here, which is Kang. Uh, so Kang is also a very, very powerful unit and should not be slept on by anybody who needs a good DPS that especially can provide you a bleed and also damage increase on the opponent who has bleed very very strong unit and very powerful so those guys are probably it but lee bora is for sure 
the main core unit, I'd say, for all dark units going forward, okay? So use her there. All right, wind. Listen, we don't have much for wind, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's going to go for Dong Su and Park Hee Jin. Those are my personal favorite wind units. Park Hee Jin, like, powers up all your ultimates, does ultimates all the time herself, has incredible buffs, has a debuff removal, uh, and at the same time, with Dong Su, has incredible damage and sustainability, and overall is, in, is a very, very strong unit. Now, if you were to look for a, a good windbreaker, Jin Chul actually being buffed now is not a bad one to go with. So he's actually a pretty good option, and one that you shouldn't really sleep on if you do need a windbreaker. He actually does help quite a bit in some stages, like reverse uh, 2 and 2, which is the Golem stage, right? So really, really good uh, breaker now as well, too, and they buffed him pretty well. He's getting more buffs. He actually just got more buffs recently. So don't sleep on him now, guys. He's, he's actually worth focusing on, okay? And then I think lastly, what do we have left? I think that covered everything, right? We got fire, water, light, dark, and I believe that's it. We're good. Well, there you guys go. So do not sleep on those units. Do not sleep on those weapon combinations. They will be the best ones to get you through Battlefield of Time or anything that is time sensitive. Make sure you focus on those. You will not go wrong with those combinations, guys, whatsoever. Again, if you have any questions about the actual other units, check out the tier list that I provide you guys recently, the most updated version that will give you guys the full breakdown of every unit and where they belong on the tier list. All right, guys, the pain. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.